these things where actually the DWP have come down and directly given us staff training, uh, also building relationships with uh, local personnel in job centres um, and of course our local authority college. Communication between all parties is absolutely key to enable the, the early identification and intervention. Um, we've done things like introducing a dedicated email system for the DWP so that they can advise us of universal claimant credit, sorry, universal credit claimants um, as soon as they're identified rather than us having to wait for a letter. Um, and then also we've been working very closely with um, local authorities, Brexit included, <coughs> to identify those households who are likely to be affected by the benefit cap. Home visits again, there's a bit of theme coming up here. <laughs> we all have to get out and about to see our customers. And as soon as a universal credit claimant or a benefit cap household is identified, we want to go out and visit them to ensure that they have a real full understanding of exactly what those changes are about and to establish whether they need any other sort of, sort of support such as budgeting. Um, we also provide advice on how to manage their rent accounts, obviously changing from weekly to monthly payments, and uh, we signpost the relevant support agencies. We're recently introducing affordability and benefit calculators, and these are actually on the housing officer's uh, mobile devices, and again, that's to give customers more help and support. The affordability calculator is just a very simple income and expenditure tool to help people <coughs> understand um, whether they can afford a tenancy. And the benefit calculator um, is an online product uh, that shows people which benefits they may be entitled to. So the calculators are used when people, new customers, are viewing a property. Um, so right from the very outset, they can make an informed decision on whether they can actually afford <coughs> that tenancy or not. Uh, and obviously they're also used for existing customers, especially when you're discussing universal credit or any rent issues. We've recently also commissioned an affordability study, and this um, was a piece of work that we took out in conjunction with Sheffield University, and it was about really understanding what affordable means for our customers. And we're in the process of analysing those results at the moment to inform us of what our next steps need to be. But the summary report and the findings will be available on our website from the 21st of October, so you might want to keep an eye out for that. And my final point today is about partnership working. <coughs> it's absolutely crucial to work collaboratively with Breckland and other agencies to improve the support that we give to our customers. Flagship is, a, is part of the Early Hub, which was launched to actively build community relationships and to ensure early intervention um, at, at the earliest possible point, um, and actually identifying where support is needed. And we'll be basing ourselves from the Breckland offices in Thetford, uh, alongside representatives <coughs> from Breckland District Council, DWP, um, Children's Services, police, GPs, all sorts of other agencies, um, very much about ensuring people get the right level of support as quickly as possible. Building relationships with local councillors obviously is also very important to us. It gives us a real opportunity to understand the community issues that, that are being brought up and enables us to find working solutions for all. So thank you for asking me to present to you this afternoon. I acknowledge that this has given you only a very, very brief overview of the sorts of things that we're looking at and producing. Um, but as an organisation, we realise that there really are some challenges out there for us. But we're actually quite excited about that because that gives us a real opportunity to learn about how that feels for our customers <coughs> and how we need to be improving our services. And we are confident that making these changes is the right thing to do to benefit our customers, our business, our communities, and our partners. So thank you. Thank you. If I could just ask you to stay where you are, and mm -hmm. perhaps you can come up. <coughs> Obviously, you're now going to be bombarded with questions. Who's going first? <coughs> Mrs. Matthews, please. So, Jane, you going to be first. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, because you get up at the end. Uh, it all sounds lovely, um, and I, I suppose you are doing a good job. But and there must be a reason. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. But there are customers around, and I have a particular one in my place, yeah. 
where the garden, the grass is growing around a car that's been stuck in the garden. It's been there years, you've been informed about it. There must be a reason why you can't do anything about it. So I would, I would like to know. Yeah. Because as a counsellor, you know, they look at some talk to us. I say, I don't know. I don't know. It's not very easy ringing up and asking you. So please, could I have a reply? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, if, if I can take some details of that, then I can um, get a response back to you. Obviously, um, I need to pass it on to the housing manager for those particular areas. Likely, you know, if we're responsible for a piece of land, then we need to be maintaining that. So we'd be really interested to, to hear about that. So, yeah. Mr. Jeremy. Thank you, Chairman. Um, thank you both for the, the presentation. Um, I was particularly interested in the uh, issue of voids because this is something I've been raising at council meetings um, for a while now. Um, and I'm sure you appreciate, but just for the sake of clarity, you know, when you've got people desperate for a house and they see a property empty for very long periods of time, as, as has been the case in Thetford repeatedly over the last six months, it's a major issue. Um, Stephanie spoke about there being a target of seven days for voids. What's the, what's the reality for, for you guys, and also the same for flagship in the interest of fairness? What, what's your actual void rate? Okay, so um, we're currently at 11 days, um, which it may, go up a few, it may go up a few days on average over the year, um, but 11 is where we expect to be at the moment. I acknowledge it's over 7, um, and ideally we would want it to be spot on 7. Um, I think the difficulty for us is we've just been through a restructure, and after you go through a restructure you will always see an increase in void times because um, redundancies, etc., and trying to implement a new service. So I would expect that we will perform better later in the year, but I wouldn't expect us to go under 11 days. I mean, with our void being seven, appreciate that. It would be great, um, what we're aiming for, but I would expect us to have achieved 11, if not maybe 12, by the end of the year. Flagship manages uh, or monitors the voids quite differently. Um, our actual void process is very different since we've introduced this, this new process. Um, prior to that, we were looking at about 15 days. Um, what we've got now is um, in the region of about a month. But we feel happy at the moment. We're not happy with that level, obviously, um, but we're working to improve that because from our point of view, it's very much about making sure we really understand what levels of repairs need to be undertaken at that particular point in time, having those conversations with the customers as they come in so they're very clear about their obligations and our obligations to them. Okay. Just follow up, thank you. Thank you for that answer. And I think you just confirmed my sort of fear really that it's, it's a major issue. Um, to what extent is that due to delays with RFT actually fixing the properties up? Uh, you know, do we have properties of flagship in a worse condition handed back than they do in Gordon, or is it purely an issue to do with RFT? Um, I wouldn't say it's mainly an issue to do with RFT. There are a number of different issues. Um, like I say, we look at our voids across the whole. So um, we have got a number of properties that because of our new stock investment model, we are actually able to bring back into um, management. Now, some of those properties have been empty for a very long time because we genuinely thought we had no option um, but to look at other uses for those. So as they come back in, obviously, they affect our, our figures significantly. Um, so we don't want to put an arbitrary number on something and say you have to turn something around within a particular amount of time. We want to be working with that process to understand what the, what's the right level of time for our properties to be empty for. We're not happy with the current position, absolutely not happy with that. Um, but equally, we're not happy to do the wrong thing in our voids just to turn something around quicker and actually end up having more of a problem at a later date. So we're just working through that new process at the moment. Okay, so if I could just ask a follow-up to what's been asked. Um, oh, you talk, yeah. Steph, no, Stephanie talked about um, dangerous properties and you moving people out, and then obviously it would take a little bit longer to repair the properties. Surely you have an asset review of all the properties, so properties you never get into a dangerous state, mm -hmm. so somebody had to move out. Yeah. So I just wondered what the process yeah. was so, behind that. So that would be, um, so that, would be that we went in and... Um, we couldn't get in on the void inspection, so the tenants are still there. We can't get in until after the termination date, so fortunate, so we've lost time. And we go in and we feel actually that um, 
it, it's unlikely to be boiling because they're further down the zero. We have no issue with that. We have 100 percent But it would be something like kitchen, you know, if there's if it's health and safety. So you know, it, it's dangerous to go in. There's maybe nails to do something that could cause damage. And at the end of the day, we don't we don't want people getting hurt, and we don't want to get sued either. So it would be those. But as I said, they are few and far between. Um, but they do occur. So it's, it's kind of being honest with you. They do happen. But actually, how many do we have? And we're all stuck. Mm, one or two a month. So I know it's, it's still something. That, but it's, it's something you can't avoid. Um, maybe once we've always been an issue. Um, and you try and get them going as quickly as possible. But also as well, it's, it's, it's getting hold of what we need. So I acknowledge it. But I think for us, it's really something that is, it's now the smallest point that it could be for us in terms of modern care. And if I could just come back to Andrea, you used the phrase, a lot of recently launched ideas. You use that quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Now, I've done housing for not that long, five or six years. And the whole time I've dealt with flagship, they've just recently launched something, and they've recently launched something, and they've recently launched something, and they've recently launched something. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of launching. Yeah. We don't ever seem to settle into something that's actually working. There's a, there seems to be a constant turnaround of turmoil in flagship which must, to some extent, affect the tenants. Is this a point where you've come to now where you're settling on something that's actually going to work, or are you going to have a new thing next to it? The, the recently launched things are more around um, actually being able to bring some additional benefits to our customers. The main frontline housing services, it's um, obviously taking um, any rentiers, dealing with antisocial behaviour, any potential support side of things, you know, those are business as normal, they will continue. Like I say, the boys have gone through an intervention probably about a year or so ago, um, and we do accept that we are still working through that process, and we just need to have the courage of our convictions and make sure that we follow that through, um, and that we aren't drawn back into doing the wrong thing because the numbers don't look right, and we want to ensure that we are doing the, the right thing for our customers. But surely you must have some sort of target system to look at a property that comes empty. Yeah. Because otherwise it would be really easy to say, well, we'll just wait a bit longer in case some disabled person needs this and we'll alter it for them. Yeah. All business now seems to work on targets. And you're saying with boys, which is a major problem we see with as councillors, you're not going to have a target on boys. We don't put a target on there, but that's not to say that we're happy with the current position. So we are working to improve, and we have seen great improvements. Um, but that's not yeah. measurable for people if they can't see where you are at a point. It's measurable. We do have statistics. We just call it a measure rather than an actual target. Um, but in terms of the new innovations and what have you, that's very much about trying to support our customers that the business is going on as normal. Um, and certainly, yeah, with, with the boys' side of things, we have been able to bring a lot of older stock back into housing management, which are affecting the, the boys' figures. We actually have a number of properties that we have been able to turn around with back-to-back boys' time for just a couple of days. Um, another thing we've done recently is we've actually changed the way that we start our tenancy. So you can start a tenancy on any day of the week, whereas beforehand you would only have to start them on a Monday. So there are other things that we're doing to reduce that. Um, it's just because we have a, a very large area of stock Obviously, if we're just looking at an average boys figure, we've got a number of different things that come in that can significantly affect that. Okay, thank you. Mr. Joel? Yeah, um, I, in my village, I've got a block of six flagship houses, mm -hmm. terrace houses. Mm -hmm. One middle has actually been sold and a right to buy, but I know the lady's now died. Right. Uh, son to go, he's, he's gone missing, and he didn't ever live there. Yeah. It's now been empty for at least two years. Uh, the winds are open. The damp's getting into the houses I was sold with by a flagship and it smells. You know, what does flagship do about it? Yeah. I'd say if there are individual property issues, if we could feed that that back, I will obviously have a look at those for you um, and get somebody to get back to you. Uh, I don't know whether it's appropriate to go through either Matthew or Ross for those, but I'll certainly get that looked into. Thank you. Okay. Mrs. West, please. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask, you're talking about the, being house repairs, you've got a team of people that 